Hello and good uh, good afternoon everyone watching this video. What I'm going to do is just show quickly inside Plant 3D 2016. Uh, we're just going to do a pin ID line, put a valve in it, uh, export some data using the data manager and then re-import that data again uh, that we've modified inside Excel. Uh, so it's just going to be a fairly short video. It's, this is the first in a series of a few that I'm going to do for pin ID plant uh, and advanced steel. So to kick off, uh, I have 2016 Plant 3D here, and just to show you quickly in regards to modifying, uh, I guess, some of the, the background properties, um, it does come with a lot of symbology. So we've got PIP, ISO, uh, DIN, and JIS. Um, so regardless of, of whichever one you load, um, you know we can go through and look at the, the project details, uh, even the database setup. So uh, we can do SQL light or SQL server um, if you do decide to use vault with plant 3d which you can now and you have been for a couple of years uh, it automatically becomes a SQL server database as well uh, we have some drawing properties here so I can add things like revisions and, and maybe who's checked the drawing who's marked up the drawing and subsequently that information will be produced uh, inside our reports as well if you want it to just looking quickly at some of the reports, so uh, you know I've got a control valve list, I've got an equipment list, I've even got a line list that I can look at quickly, and then I can go through and have a look at which properties I do want to include uh, in those reports as well. And lastly, under the general settings, I can add file name format. So uh, for things like maybe I want the the, the end users to always use uh, maybe something like uh, area number, then discipline, then a drawing number, then I can add uh, those file formats in here. Under the PNID drawing settings, we've got things like the end connection, so flange, socket welded, uh, unspecified or welded, uh, and I can go through and just click on edit block, and then that will uh, just take us into the AutoCAD block editor and we can modify those. A few settings for the line settings, uh, and then the main thing I really want to touch base on is things like these PNID class definitions. So <clears throat> if I go through and have a look at something like the, the check valve style, if I click on edit symbol, it takes me to a, to a new dialog where I can modify the, the layer, the color, uh, and if it was a line, I've got line top scales, obviously, and I've also got symbol scale. Being a valve, I can tell it to automatically generate a tag. Maybe I don't want it to uh, tag it, or maybe I want it to prompt for a tag as well. Uh, and then if I want to edit the block itself, I just click on edit block and it takes me into the block editor again. I can adjust the size of it, um, how big it is, whether the arrowheads are going to be filled or open, and adding these, these encodes in. So these are important for when you're placing it. We have an encode 0 being the, the, the beginning spot and encode 180 being uh, directly opposite it. So a lot of those properties and classes we can go through. So like I said, for things like lines, so I can go through and look at the primary line segments. Uh, and modify those in there as well. So we've got the process layer, color blue, um, and also things like even like nozzle, single line, uh, signal lines, and anything that's maybe a non-engineering item, so things like the, the flow arrows. If I wanted to add a new symbol, I can just click on Add Symbols up here at the, the Valves class. I can select the drawing with all the valve uh, symbology that I want to use, and I can individually select one of, uh, one of them or all of them and, and uh, you know bring them into the project itself. So once all of that is set up, we look at our PNID drawings area. So you can see I've created an Area 51 subfolder. We open up the, the first PNID. It goes through validation. I'll, I'll skip that for now. And what I'm going to do here is just I'm going to place a line from this exchanger going up to this, this, this tank or this tower. So everything's driven through workspaces. So I'm just going to switch from my 3D workspace to my 2D workspace and dock that pallet to the side. So now these are, again, like everything that we have inside plant, some of these are predefined. We've got lines, we've got equipment, valves, fittings, and a few other options here. I'm just going to place a primary segment line going from the exchanger. So you can see there it snaps to the, the nozzle and then over to the tank or the tower there. So now I have that line. If I think I've made a mistake to it, I can just select it, right click on it, edit the line and then say reverse flow so you can see the flow arrow is flowing from the tank to the exchanger now so I'm just going to put that back now I'm going to assign some metadata to it I click on assign tag 
I say that it's going to be a six inch line. The spec is carbon steel 150. Uh, I'm going to say maybe that it's a glycol return line and I'm going to give it a line number 9999. At the same time, I can choose whether I want to place annotation or not, and I do in this case. So I, I do want to put the pipeline tag and there it is there. Now that because I've, I've placed the size, the spec, the service and the line number, I can place valves on it. Now the software is telling me that I need to have a unique identifier that, for that valve, so I'm just going to give it the last line number that I think of. And there it is there. So now we have a 6 inch valve on a 6 inch line. If I change the pipeline size to an 8 inch, then the valve changes. So I'm just going to change that back to, to my 150. So we can go through the PNIDs, put in all the lines. We've got instrumentation, we've got other valves, we've obviously got other pump symbols, tank symbols, um, the equipment blocks fairly extensive. By the same token, you can bring in normal AutoCAD blocks and convert them um, from non-intelligent to intelligent lines as well. Even with the off-page connectors, I can select an off-page connector and I can say view the connected or even open the connected drawing. So if I click on open connected, it takes me straight to that, um, that off-page connector and I can continue running the line there as well. So as we continue to go through the PNIDs, maybe someone turns around to, to us and says, that they want to generate maybe a valve list. So we click on data manager here. So you can see that uh, I've got all my different engineering items. I am particular want to look at my gate valve list. So I've got 22 gate valves there. Now let's say we treat the PNID as the Bible for the project. So I want to populate the manufacturer model number and supplier for this. So I'm just going to export this to Excel of the active node being the gate valves. Export this down to my desktop. And then if I look at my desktop now, I have an Excel spreadsheet of all of my valves on this drawing. So now we can say that the manufacturer is Keystone, the model number is ABC123, and the supplier is, let's say, a local hardware store here called Bunnings. So I want all of these valves to have that information. So I can use normal Excel functionality to, to do a fill down on that. I save that file, I go back to Plant 3D or Pin ID and I import that file. So now I select that same gate valves list and now it's telling me that uh, we have um, these keystone valves here and if I zoom to part of the Pin ID you can see there that um, the valve has been clouded. I can turn those those clouds on and off. I can also accept or reject uh, these changes one at a time or I can say do all of them. So I'm just going to say yes to all of them. Then the data gets committed to the database. It's writing it to that PNID. And just as a check I can even pull up one of the other PNIDs, uh, the other valves, have a look at the properties of it. And we can see there that we have Keystone, ABC123, and then we're buying it from Bunnings. So that pretty much ends this presentation. Uh, look out for my next one where I'll be converting my 2D PNID lines into 3D itself onto a 3D model.